start by asking you guys please subscribe to this channel and you can like this video if you have any question please put it in the comment section today i'll be discussing about nymphaea thermama this is the world's smallest water lead the nymphaea thermama was discovered by german scientists in the country of rwanda in 1987 this was found in one of the hot springs in the rainforest of Rwanda. Now, the plant is labeled extinct or endangered, uh, it's endangered in the wilderness because of the um, of harvesting of forest and really they weren't taking good care of that hot spring. So from its natural habitat, the plant has basically extinct. And botanical gardens around the world have been trying ever since to so much try the best they can to preserve the original genomes and the seeds from wherever it was harvested it has been distributed around the world in larger, uh, in larger botanical gardens and i'm happy to have one here we have a big sample and i will get into the what we're doing and the science behind it i'll explain everything including this frankenstein looking scientific thing so stay tuned so Nymphaea thermamum, uh, when we call it the world's smallest water lily, this is what it means. The leaves are really small, they are really tiny compared to any other water lily found in cultivation or in the wilderness. And the flower itself, the flower can be so small, the flower is, this one is so big, it's size of a quarter, like American corn. So it is actually a really small plant, all things considered. If you compare, if you compare it with Amazon water lilies, um, the Victoria Amazonica, a leaf span of one Victoria Amazonica, the biggest one was like nine feet across. Now, if you compare that with these tiny small leaves here, this takes the, um, the spot of being the smallest water lily from the flower to its leaves to the size of the plant. As a matter of fact, this whole matured plant here can fit in an Amazonica flower. Like you can take that whole plant and it will fit in the Amazonica flower. But this one is a complete, total plant. Lilies usually germinate from really deep on the uh, underwater that's where the seeds usually germinate well with the nymphaea thermama they've been trying to germinate them for a period now but um, scientists at the Kew Garden actually figured out like because of the origin of the plant and where it came from it looks like the plant usually actually germinates not really sub totally submerged into the water but the seeds want a little bit of air that's when it germinates well hence this experimental thing here so the seedlings it will uh, the flowers will actually get pollinated and they will throw out seeds they're everywhere it seeds a lot and after it seeds the seedlings will start to try coming out now what we do here is we keep lifting up wherever the seedling comes until they are not fully submerged and that's how we get so many seedlings going. The trick here was to make sure during um, and after germination the seeds do not actually totally get submerged into the water and that was the trick to make it Due to the nature of its origin, figured out um, Nymphaea thermama meets more supplemental carbon dioxide. Being a, a plant which lives in the water, we know it's deprived of carbon dioxide, which is an essential part during the photosynthesis process. So we uh, get this carbon dioxide tank and 
basically it's all set up to certain amount, it's gonna release a certain amount of carbon dioxide which goes into the water just for supplemental purposes. And because the name Thermamam also depicts that the plant is originally from the hot spring, thermal in Latin means hot. We have to heat up the water so that it reaches a certain temperature, at least above um, room temperature. This is why there are heaters in there. And then coming from right at the equator, you need supplemental lights. That's why we have these true spectrum lights which are shining on the plant for 12 hours a day straight. This way we don't deprive this plant of any light. So combining those tricks and the care we give the plant, the putting some supplemental food and nutrition. This is why we're successful growing this plant and giving some new seedlings out of it. Um, the other seedlings you see, these guys, plus the seeds which are submerged there, those are Typhonodorum. It's a totally different plant. Um, the target here is the actual cotton. And that's the world's smallest cotton. So that's it for today. That's our Nymphaea thermamum. Hope you guys enjoyed it and learned something out of it. Thank you very much for watching. Please don't forget to like, comment, and most importantly, if you haven't subscribed to this channel, you may want to do so now. Thank you very much and have a blessed day.